Hey guys, welcome back to part three of my chat with poet, podcaster, and author Megha Rao. In this final part of my chat with her, I talk to her about the importance of being authentic, and also what's bigger, the art or the artist, and a bunch of other stuff as well. So before we head into my conversation on take a pause with Megha Rao, I want you guys to hit subscribe and smash that bell icon, and we'll fast forward into my chat with Megha Rao. A large part of your work um, talks about really personal experiences, right? Um, I mean, I, I've I've run through parts of of your book. I, I haven't finished it yet. I think I'm I'm also like I'm letting it soak in a little bit. I'm not letting it be one of those things. You finish over a weekend scenario. I'm just letting it letting many parts kind of soak <laughs> in, and I love reflecting on things. So I, I've I've been doing that. Um, I go back to some of your episodes as well, uh, where you talk about. Specific things that have happened in your life, specific experiences, you kind of base it on that. Um, has that ever been a conflict in your head? Because oftentimes, when you're putting something which is so deeply personal out there, there is a worry that okay, I'll be judged. Those people have points of view. Do people need to have a point of view on my on my own life, or or is the value of you channeling it to for just like create to, to put a creative out there um, far far beyond that? I think it really started. or you know was born in this very vulnerable space when i didn't even realize that you know people were reading it honestly at that time i was you know i just had like a couple of like 100 facebook friends or something people in mm-hmm. my college and my target audience is them and it wasn't like oh i want them to read it and think wow this is so pretty i love this i relate to this no i I have had like experiences where I was ambushed and I start crying in the middle of the ground with all these people surrounding me and mm. yelling things at me and you know it was like 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 it was bad mm. um people would say stuff and there was no escaping it not at that moment right like there was no getting up and saying how dare you call me that I mean some somebody could have done it but I was numb mm. and then i would run back to my hostel with all these unaddressed emotions which a lot of it was grief now i realize um oh but i kind of covered it up with rage you know like mm. it was grief under all of it was grief <laughs> but at the surface was this burning rage and i was like i have to have the last word and i had nothing left to lose at that point by the way and i had no friends i started writing and i would like put up all these poems kind of like a rant kind of like hate poems and sad poems where in the end i'd again be like threatening them and being all vengeful it was a different time and i'd put it out there hoping like these people would see it mm. and I, i i thought because they were so long like these were like really long poems most people would skip it like my aunts my uncles like, yeah whatever um but then like i wanted these kids to read it cuz i knew they were targeting me so they would look at it that was the whole point of it oh but what ended up happening was i never found out if they read it but i started getting a lot of messages from random people telling me that they you know they sobbed to it they cried to it they could understand it at a point when i couldn't understand what was happening to me like i i didn't know how to address it see i didn't know that I didn't know anything at that point like I knew nothing I I did, I had I didn't even know about therapy I didn't even know that something was wrong with me I didn't even know that you know this is called trauma or PTSD or whatever um I didn't know I was just feeling all of these things and writing was just this safe space and I think that when it started there in that vulnerable place it was so important to me because I always say that art saved my life it actually did so to come to a point where i'm just creating art and creating art without really you know respecting it without really letting it come to me um i just i can't do it i can't detach myself from that very obvious blatant vicious vulnerability that i've always had and i think that is why it comes from personal space it's so important for me to retain that because that's where it all started and apart from that 
it also acts as this secret place because sometimes when you're just sharing something with someone you still know that the narrator is you mm. you're like still saying listen this happened to me but when you're writing it in a poem there's a lot of mystery around it yeah. see there's a lot of honesty for sure but also mystery because people are like is she talking about herself probably it's definitely autobiographical but mm. uh, we still don't know what's exaggeration what's what really happened what didn't it's it's you know what happened but at the same time there's still like that shield of mystery that's protecting you and i love that because i'm not a kind of person who can just like directly talk to people i i'm a very private person but at the same time it's through poetry that i actually tackle the personal and convey it to people i, I think that's a super interesting point right because i feel that's where art really comes from you're channelizing things which are you have in your mind experiences you had to really put out there but what you just said about the mystery i think that there's something there which um we sometimes miss these days i miss that a lot in content all content is to be as clear as possible now i also worked in television for a long time so i went like lowest common denominator was always the term that was used uh do you feel that the nuance is something you build up naturally or is that nuance kind of something you learn over time because often times you're putting a point across that mystery that adding that layer to make people like it almost draws people in but how did you build that into your craft i think that's very inherent because like i said um you know i'm someone who wants to write about stuff but also i'm a very private person hmm. so i'm not going to like go and tell people my story like it's a story i'm not going to anything like i i I'm, i'm very quiet even at home um it's my family always comes in you don't tell us anything that's happening in your life like you don't you don't tell us anything so i'm walking around with like so many secrets and i mean even i mean poetry is the only channel where i could put it out there in the you know closest way um so when i'm hiding stuff even when i'm writing poetry i think that's just it just happens naturally i i want to with withhold i want i mean it's it's like there's a very thin shield or thin shield that separates reality from what's reality for me like what was actually real and what i perceived as real because those are those could be two completely different things but um, i i'd like to believe that it's it's quite inherent i have to ask you this because and i think it's a great uh, point to bring this one up is to say that uh, who motivates you like if you have to look at okay x y and z are people who i mean I, i'm not even saying people i'm going to leave it at who who motivates who 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 helps bring motivation into you i think so much of what i create is inspired by um you know like family friends i don't write about them but mm. let's say like a lot of my own personal opinions and the way i see the world it's definitely influenced by like the five people i'm most in touch with but apart from that um i mean i i also keep to myself a lot so like there's a lot of stuff going on in my head um and so that's how i see the world i my own thoughts ideas inspire me but externally like whatever i like to read um i really love joan didion she's uh she passed away recently um but she's a phenomenal essayist she's i i really love her work because there's something very um crisp and real about it about the way she writes it's like there's no word that's out of place and i really like that like she's really good with craft um apart from that literary influences I've been reading K R Meera a lot right now. I I like her work because she's from Kerala and yeah. she's also like the the way she tackles this very sensitive topic. Um I I like it. I like I like that there's no beating around the bush. There's just like direct narration. Um poetry I mean my primary influence would be Sylvia Plath. Um I just that's where i started learning that there was something called confessional poetry uh it's been a while since i read plath but i know during um i think 
it, she formed a big part of understanding my identity during my growing years and my early 20s um and there are many other poets that i really like like darwish and you know um also rimbaud who's a french poet uh, very you know he writes with so much of grandeur it's it's really compa- it's really compelling um but apart from that like if i weren't to look at writers mm. i think as an individual like overall i'm really inspired by frida kahlo and i get really <laughs> aggravated when other people say that they like frida kahlo because then i i start like hitting them with questions okay you like her <laughs> um what is your favorite painting that she made because most people who like i come across who told me that they like frida kahlo like her because everyone else likes her and you know because yeah. there's something called you know you know the whole concept of frida mania where people got so obsessed with the artist that yeah. they you know the artist just became bigger than the art like people who have heard of frida kahlo who love frida kahlo can't like they don't know what she's painted they know everything about her life about who she married about you know like about her health issues they know that you know she's a feminist they know a lot of things about her but they don't know about her paintings and you know i hope that never happens to any artist because the art is always bigger than the artist it shouldn't be the other way around and i'm i mean i see that happening quite a bit these days where people artists put themselves in the limelight and the art yeah. takes a back seat and uh, i i don't want to be that way but frida kahlo for me is an inspiration because um because i really love love the way she puts the personal in her painting like she literally i mean i'm not just talking about the self portraits i'm just talking about everything that she creates that's this element of her identity integrated in it and i i think that's very inspiring also like some of the like she also writes which i don't i don't know like i don't i want to talk about that because like some of the letters that she's written are so full of passion and urgency and you know it's so raw and i really like that and i think that that's that's the kind of vitality i want to have when i'm approaching life um and that's very inspiring for me you mentioned legacy a while back and i'm just bringing that here because of what you just said saying that do you feel there's more this better legacy or more stronger legacy when the art is first uh, is before the artist rather than the artist being before the art do you see that being do you think there's more legacy there in that sense so as human beings we all have like limited time on earth mm. like what maximum 100 years mm. and then once we die we're dead we're gone art is something that cannot die and i think this is what most artists need to realize years later like years down the line like when i mean i am talking i'll talk about myself like centuries later i'm underground i'm one with the earth and nobody's going to be like oh did you know mega rao did mega rao i mean they could be did like, you follow her oh, instagram <laughs> oh yeah um yeah or did you see her website no that's not going to happen yeah i mean it could but it it doesn't i mean what kind of conversation is that it's mm. like it ends there it's like a one liner um versus someone reading something you wrote sitting there sobbing in the middle of the night 12 am when they thought that they couldn't move forward with life whether it's a 14 year old girl or a 70 year old person anything right if you could touch their life in that second in that one second it should mean more than someone saying oh you want to hear about me gana you want to hear about this artist i think i think that's where it gets muddled right i think that it's so important for an artist to observe rather than be observed only then can you create so many of us want to be observed that we forget to observe and also like you know you i don't know for me i think i think i've just thought too much about this which is why 
I'm like I have this very specific opinion about it, but I always I think I know that no matter what, I want the art to live on because I think that's how we make our mark in the world and that's how we're gonna help future generations to, you know, understand themselves too. Because people before me, writers before me helped me understand myself. So I wanna I wanna that's the le- that's the legacy I'm talking about too. It's not just my legacy, but like legacy of all of literature. We're just passing it down. And I think I think that's what we're doing. Now, if I had to ask you one part of what your process is to write which you feel that um you'd want more than what people should should follow but more like this something which which has really worked for you have to pick one thing from your process what would that be so i start from the end and then hmm. i figure the rest out i don't just jump into a poem or like a, a novel or whatever or even like a podcast episode i don't just start with one line and then wonder where to go or see where it's going I need to know how it ends, whether it's a book, whether it's, you know, a poem. A poem, definitely, I want my last line to be the best line, okay? So, you know, like, I feel like for me when I write, I write all these this beautiful stuff and in the end, I, you know, it's it doesn't stay with the reader. Mm-hmm. Then I feel like the poem's forgettable. Um, I know that's, that's a very rigid way of thinking because I've never felt that way when I'm reading someone else's poem. But for my own creative process, it's kind of this rule that I employ. I just don't feel satisfied if the ending isn't good. Yeah. Um, so I start from the end. Like I only write a poem if I have like that one last line in my head. I'm like, oh yes, okay, now I'm, I can write this poem. I think that's so true, right? I mean, how often have you heard someone turn around and say, you oh, know, the movie was good, but you know, they didn't they didn't know how to end it or the ending <laughs> was bad. You know, so oftentimes, I feel that that needs to be thought out a lot more. We get obsessed with the concept of it. Um, and speaking of endings, um, I think we pretty much reached the end of this conversation. I, I, I keep going on and go deeper and down this rabbit hole, but you've given me a great way to end it. We spoke about ending uh, and where you should actually start off with the end and kind of build things back. Um, uh, Mega, thank you so much for doing this. This is uh, this is exactly what and more of what I'd hoped this conversation would be about. Thank you for for taking a pause on on take a pause with me. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to consuming more of the art that you create. I, maybe I won't say content. I won't say art. Uh, that you create, <laughs> I know you started um, with content. I started with content. I ended with art. See, we got it from there. <laughs> oh. You converted me in one hour from using the word content to calling uh, to using the word art but uh, thank you so much for doing this I'm, i have a ton of stuff which i i i'm going to soak in and think about especially my need to overshare uh, and create too much content but uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and it's been oh no i mean you should definitely overshare and create too much content but it shouldn't be because you feel pressurized it should yeah. just be because you want to like some people can really create something like like 500 poems in yeah. a month that that's cool like yeah. do whatever you want just the external influence that that's yeah. what's worrying. That's that's actually what I I fall into so often. So it's it's uh, something which I need to kind of stop myself from doing more often. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, I I really really enjoyed this conversation. It was really beautiful. I hope you got a ton of learnings from the entire conversation I had with Mega. And if you haven't seen part one and part two of this conversation, you should definitely check it out on my channel. And don't forget to hit subscribe and smash that bell icon because there's a lot more content coming up and make sure you catch up on all the other conversations and content that's already on the channel as well. Till next time, take a pause, think about a bunch of stuff.